Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fan YouTube channel. Today we're solving lead code problem 128, longest consecutive sequence. Given an unsorted array of integers num, return the length of the longest consecutive elements sequence. You must write an algorithm that runs in big O of n time. Let's look at a very basic example. We're given this input 100, 4, 200, 1, 3, 2. So basically, we want to construct the longest consecutive sequence of numbers we can here. So let's see, uh, we have 101. Do we have, you know, maybe 99 or 101? No, so we can't really do anything with this. Uh, what about 200? Well, we don't have 199 and we don't have 201. So we can't really do anything with that either. What about four? Well, do we have three? Yeah, we do. Do we have five? No, but maybe we can go backwards. So we have four, we have three, and then from three, we have two and we have one. So actually we can build a sequence, one, two, three, four, uh, and that actually is our best answer here. So basically we can just use whatever elements we have and we can put them in any order we want. Similar with this uh, nums here, as you can quickly glance from this, this is actually the numbers um, from basically zero to, uh, it looks like eight, right? So let's see what we can do here. So we have two zeros, which doesn't really do anything for us. Um, actually, can we have duplicates? Let's see if it matches. So we have zero, uh, and then we also have a one here. Let's see, do we have two? Yes, we have two, oops, two. We have three, we have four, we have five, we have six, seven, and we have eight. Okay, so it looks like we can't do duplicates because uh, the final answer is nine. So basically we can rearrange our numbers in any order we want. Um, and then see what the longest sequence we can get. So looking at the basic examples, it's, it's quite easy to figure out how to do this. Now, before I actually get into the actual solution for this, because we know that we need to do it in big O of n time, let's first think about what the naive solution is, because this will actually motivate um, how we actually solve it for the optimal case. So let's think about this. <clears throat> to check if we have a sequence, we need to basically, for any number, we need to start checking to the right of it and to the left of it, and basically see how many elements there are on the left and how many elements there are on the right. If we add that plus the number in the middle, then that is the length of our sequence. So what we could do, and we're not going to do this because this isn't the best answer, um, we could basically just put into a, you know, we can hash, we can create a set of all of the numbers that we have. <clears throat> and then what we want to do is for each number, we're going to check, okay, do we have, um, you know, whatever that number minus one is? Uh, yes. Okay, then we want to basically keep going until, you know, we exhaust that number. Uh, and then we also want to go to n plus one, and then we want to keep going to the right. And we're going to do that for every single number here until we get our sequence. So for example, with 100, if we had our set being like 0, 100, 4, 2, uh, 1, 3, 2, <clears throat> then what we want to do here is that, okay, we're going to check, okay, do we have 99? No. Okay, so we can't really do anything there. Do we have 101? No. So the length of that sequence is just one if we just took 100 on its own. Then we're going to get to four. So do we have a five? No, but can we get a three? Yes. Can we get a two? Yes. Can we get a one? Yes. Can we get a zero? No. Okay. So the sequence ends there. It would be four, one, three, two. Now, you know, this is pretty efficient. You know, we're doing lookups in a set and this is, you know, a set lookup is big O of one. The problem here is that we need to do this operation for every number. So that's already a big O of N operation just to go through every number but now we need to actually do a big o of n search across all of the potentially other numbers in here um, because for each one we need to basically search uh, the rest of the array to see if we can find uh, those numbers so we actually will get some duplicates here and our algorithm will actually run in big o of n squared time which is not what we want because the, the issue here is, okay, we've done it for four and we've established that we get one, two, three, four as our longest sequence. But what happens when we then process one? We'll also do one, two, three, four. And then also for three, we'll also get that one, two, three, four. And also for two, we'll get one, two, three, four. So notice all of this duplicated work. And, you know, if you have something like this, where actually all the numbers are already in a sequence, you're gonna have to redo this lookup 
big O of n times. So that's actually why we have you know n squared here for this algorithm. So instead of doing it for this, we actually want to just do it one time. Instead of um, starting it at four, we basically just want to start it from one and then go all the way to the right. So we need a mechanism that will actually let us do that. So this is the crux of the solution. And we'll actually just go over how to do this in the code editor because it's really simple. But essentially what we want to do is the same approach we just did with the naive solution, except instead of checking every single element, uh, we want to be smart about where we actually start checking such that we don't repeat ourselves. And you'll see how we do this in the code editor. It, there's really no point of going through an example with it because it's really straightforward in the code. We'll just do it there. But just remember that we need a smart way of actually uh, making sure we don't duplicate ourselves in the logic. So let's go to the code editor and I'll show you how we're actually going to do that. Okay, we are in the code editor. Let's type this up. Like I promised, the code is really simple. So let's begin. Remember that the first thing that we need to do is actually put our numbers into a set such that um, you know we have something to process here and we can do the lookups efficiently. So we're gonna say that nums is actually going to equal to a set of nums. So we're gonna put this into a set so that we can easily do efficient lookups. Now what we want to do is we want to iterate over each of the nums in nums and figure out what our result is. But before we do that, let's initialize our longest streak variable, which is going to store our result. Obviously, it starts at zero because we haven't processed anything yet. So now we're going to do for num in nums. Here's where we want to be smart. Remember, we don't want to duplicate things. So for example, if we had one, two, three, four in our array, if we process the four first, we would get three, two, one. Um, and then also when we do it for one, we would get one, two, three, four. And then if we did it for two, we'd get the same answer and same for three, right? We don't want to duplicate that work. We want to be smart. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to say if num minus one is not in nums, then what we want to do is we want to start from that number. So if there's nothing to the left of the, our number, then that would be the starting point, right? So say we had, again, the numbers one, two, three, four. If we were processing one, um, we can see that there's nothing to the left of it. So that way we can, we can just go right. And by having this constraint, we'll make sure that we actually never duplicate ourselves in the processing. Because say in our set, three actually comes first, right? Because two is already in the set, this is not the starting point of this sequence. Two could be the starting point, but actually when we get to two, we realize that one is the starting point. So we wanna make sure that there is never an element to the left of our current element before we start counting. That way we can be sure that our start element is actually the start of the sequence and we can just simply look for num plus one uh, until we reach the end of our sequence. So that's the way that we're actually going to be smart about it. Because, okay, again, if we get four, then three could be the start of our sequence. So we're not even going to process four because we know that there will be a sequence three and four that will um, be longer than just four. So we don't even process four. And that's how we're going to avoid our duplicate uh, processing here and bring the time complexity down. So if we found the leftmost point of our sequence by saying that if there is nothing to the left of our current number, then we want to go to the right and see how long this sequence can go. So we're going to say uh, current equals num. And we're going to say that current streak uh, is going to equal to one because obviously our current number is the number that we take and we're good to go. Now what we want to do is keep going to the right of our current number and just process as far as we can. So we're going to say while current plus one exists in nums. So while it's in nums, we're going to say that the current streak uh, is going to get incremented by one. The current number will get incremented by one. And we just run until this while loop will end on its own. Then when the while loop ends, we need to update our longest streak. So we're going to say longest streak is going to equal to max longest streak and whatever the current streak is. So we will update our solution if there is a better one. Once our for loop ends, we just need to return the longest streak. Now, okay, if you're still confused, I will make this super crystal clear for you. Uh, let's look at this example again. So we put this into our set. 
So what we're gonna do, and maybe, yeah, okay, this is a good example. So we're gonna put this in our set, and I'll use curly braces to indicate that it's a set. So let's go through this one by one. So the first number that we process is going to be 100. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check, is there 99 in our set? So 99 in the set, no. So that means that we can process to the right of 100, assuming that it's the start point. So we're gonna say the current number is 100, current streak is one, and we're gonna try to look for 101. So obviously 101 is not in this um, set, so we can't do anything. The longest streak just becomes one, right? So longest streak just becomes one because we were able to take the 100. Now we get to the four. And previously, when we did it naively, we would have processed and got that we can build a streak of one, two, three, four, but we have, since three is in our nums, we know that we can build a sequence of three, four. So starting at three, we can go to the right and there could potentially be more things here, but there's no reason of doing anything with a four as the starting point if we know that there is something with a three because it will always be longer. So that means that we don't even process this four. Then we get to this 200 here. And again, we're gonna check, is 199 in the set? No, that means that this could be a starting point. Uh, it's not, obviously, because 201 is not in the set, so we don't do anything. The longest streak is still one. Then we get to the one. At this point, we check, okay, is zero in the set? No, so we can start processing, okay. So then we're gonna hit this while loop. We're gonna check, okay, is two in here? Yes, it is. Uh, so now the current streak will become two because it was previously one. Uh, and then we're gonna check is three in nums? Yes, it is. So now the current streak is four. Then we're gonna check is four in there? Yes, it is. We update the current um, streak. And then we're gonna check is five in there? It's not, so that we, we break this while loop. Then we update our longest streak variable to be four. And then, you know, we continue. So with three, obviously two is in there, so we don't need to process it. Two, one is in there, so we don't need to process it. So you can see how we basically skipped running for four, three, and two, and this is where we save on the time complexity. So now if you see, we're gonna just submit this. Let me make sure I just didn't make any silly syntax mistakes with my uh, unexpected indent. What happened here? Uh, did I screw something up on the indentation? Not nums. Um, let's see, for num and nums, if, huh, why is my indent wrong? Huh, interesting, what is wrong with the indent? Oh, wow, that, why is that, that's so weird. Okay, anyway, that's weird. Wrong answer, what am I, did I not return the right variable? Longest, ha, <laughs> longest stake, okay, that, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's just stupid. All right, there we go. Now, if we actually spell it right, um, we'll, we'll get the right answer. Okay, wonk is steak. Uh, let's now submit it. And um, hello, okay, accepted, perfect. So, what is the time and space complexity here? So, obviously, for this solution to even be accepted, it has to follow the requirements in the problem, and that is that it's big O of n. So we create this uh, nums here, which is going to take big O of n time, obviously, to make a set out of a list. Uh, and then for our processing, as you can see, we actually don't repeat processing. Um, so each element will actually only be processed one time, which means that this entire loop here is also big O of n. So that means that our total time complexity is just big O of n plus big O of n, but asymptotically that's big O of n. Uh, so this is the time and um, the space complexity. As you can see, we basically need to build a set out of our nums. So that's just gonna take big O of n. And that is your time and space complexity, relatively straightforward. Okay, so that is how you solve longative, longative, geez, I cannot speak today, I can't type today. Um, yeah, this is how you solve longest consecutive sequence. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you found the video informative and you didn't uh, cringe at my mistakes and spelling mistakes, but it's fine. We like to have fun on this channel. Uh, you can see that I'm doing this live. All right, if you enjoyed the video, why not leave it a like and a subscription to the channel? It really helps me grow. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.